Hey guys, it's Mouthy here once again, and today I've got to share with you, well, a build that's not really that worth sharing because it is my most, probably most expensive and hardest to replicate build ever before. And uh, it's based around Spectral Shield Throw and a timeless jewel that we have dubbed God Jewel because it gives so many benefits in such a small uh, area for pure damage in the form of, at this point, um, spell damage, lightning to attacks, and ranged attack damage. So if you stack Crown of Eyes with a bunch of ranged stuff using some um, lightning damage perhaps, then you can add up to 800% increased damage in this area. And I will show you guys the jewel uh, shortly uh, once I get into the character. But that's why I managed to build Spectral Shield Throw as insane as it currently is here. Um, dealing something like 3 million single target damage. And I decided to go all out with the Eternity Shroud, meaning I need a bunch of shaped gear and a bunch of conversion stacking to get what should be about as dumb a uh, Spectral Shield Throw damage and build as you could possibly do, since Spectral Shield Throw got a bit of a, um, well, boost on the scene with a Threshold Jewel that gives you additional chains. It does seem to be very worth using, um, but it's still got a bit of single target trouble. Figured I'd go ahead and use the Jewel that I found uh, with a skill that's not too insanely strong so that we could actually boost it into stronger levels. And uh, Spectral Shield Throw was the choice, though you could have also gone just about any other range thing and Wanda was um, something I kind of wanted to look into as well since it's in a similar category, good AOE, uh, pretty mediocre uh, single target. But I decided that I'd just go all out with this one. I don't think anyone's really going to be trying to replicate and I do um, think you can easily get a uh, well, we've seen uh, currently out there plenty of SST builds that are still kind of similar but using a slightly different scaling and a completely different budget to be successful. So I will still uh, mention those as an option if you want to play some Spectral Shield Throw since it is a fairly smooth build to be playing. But this one that I'm going to show you is going to be more or less a build showcase and it's going to be almost impossible to replicate uh, because it is based around the Timeless Jewel that is uh, fairly ridiculous to get. Uh, those things are not easy at all. And then as well as that, the gear is just super expensive thanks to all of the shaped stuff and, um, well, the stops I had to pull out to fix a lot of the life resists and uh, just it's a currency sink like no other. Uh, but as far as Spectral Shield Throw is concerned, it is in a, a pretty decent spot here with the Threshold Jewel. Uh, you do have a lot of chains. You, you know, add that with Fork and you can see that um, it does a splitting to begin with and then chains both those um, shields. And there's all kinds of um, just solid AoE happening in this build. And it is a smooth build to play or a smooth skill to play at this point, though it won't really ever have great single target. I think the best version may still be something like Bleed Gladiator, but it's kind of weak either way. It's just not a single target based skill whatsoever. And the most popular way of building them is a Deadeye so that you can go kind of fast, get an additional chain, uh, and then also have a bunch of extra damage based off of the chains. And well, it works pretty well. A lot of people have done some Deadeye action and it is uh, worth doing if you really want to test um, some different skills in this game because Spectral Shield Throw is kind of a unique thing in its own right. You're throwing your shield, you're scaling damage based off of armor uh, or evasion, and it's just kind of a different thing. Uh, this is the single target that I'm currently up to on this character, something like two to three million damage, so it's pretty ridiculous, uh, but it did take some ridiculous things to get to this stage. So I wanna show you guys how I've built it, uh, how it's supposed to be built, and uh, some of the gear around it and then uh, maybe a little bit of a demo as well. So here is the character, currently level 89, called Rainbow SST. Uh, that is to symbolize the fact that my damage is coming from all different sources. We got a lot of chaos, decent bit of lightning uh, that has been converted, a lot of cold, a lot of fire that then all get stacked into chaos thanks to the uh, chaos conversion that is Eternity Shroud. Now this character is an exercise in wasting currency and like I said, not sure I recommend uh, replicating this type of character because it's going to be very hard to do so and I'm not even sure it's that worth doing. Uh, similarly, you can build around Eternity Shroud with this type of stuff 
um, on plenty of other skills like Divine Ire, which does seem to be a popular choice because once you scale Divine Ire in the same sort of way that I'm scaling this, you can just about one shot every boss in the game and it becomes pretty worth doing. But the reason we made this character to begin with is thanks to this jewel here. Elegant Hubris, 50,300 coins to Kadiro. I uh, happened to find this one and I try out every jewel I find across the passive tree to see if anything cool is happening. And with this one, well, it turns out some cool things are happening. Um, with this type of a jewel, if you are unaware, all the notables get changed to something different uh, that are in the radius and all of the smaller passives just become absolutely nothing. So they become just travel nodes that you have to take and then you have to figure out um, the most efficient route to be using these things. This one here, once I looked at it, it gave me a lot of projectile damage. A uh, little bit of accuracy here. There is some power charge on crit over here, which I'm not utilizing. Bunch of stuff we don't really care about. But then there's stuff over here like 80 spell damage, 80 projectile damage, um, 80 projectile damage, 80 spell damage, 80 lightning damage with attacks. You then have 80 spell damage, uh, 80 lightning with attacks. You got 80 projectile damage, 80 spell damage. These down here, though... They do, you know, attribute to God Jewel status of about 800% damage, but they do cost four points to get. And by this point, when I've already got like 600, 700% increased damage, an additional four points to get those is kind of costly and not necessarily worth doing. So I need to kind of care about the balance of my character. Uh, so if you're using a Crown of Eyes, increases and reductions to spell damage also apply to attacks. All of this spell damage then becomes um, attack damage as well, and that means that a Spectral Shield throw build that otherwise is kind of tough to get increased damage on, because traditionally you're only really getting it from things like shield nodes, maybe some elemental damage nodes if you are um, converting completely, or some physical nodes. Uh, in this case, I get so much more damage um, going towards my Spectral Shield throw than you otherwise would be able to for this type of skill. So uh, Crown of Eyes becomes um, pretty damn important in this sort of setup. And then I went with Eternity Shroud so that I can, because it's a um, physical to elemental conversion build, but I wanted to take it another level. So if you're unaware of how Eternity Shroud works, um, you gain 5% of elemental damage as extra chaos per Shaper item equipped. If all of your items are Shaper, that's about 50% extra damage. And then you also uh, ignore enemy chaos resist. But it's 50% extra elemental to every conversion stage. So first of all, we convert a lot of our um, physical into lightning through physical to lightning. And then uh, this lightning conversion over here. And um, so we have 75% lightning and we gain 50% extra chaos off of that. You convert all of that elemental into cold, not quite all of it. Um, a lot of that lightning goes to cold through two Call of the Brotherhoods, so 80%. Um, all of that cold then gets extra elemental as chaos. You then convert uh, a lot of that cold into fire, thanks to the cold to fire gem over here. And then all of that fire gets elemental as chaos as well. So you can see that there's supposed to be about 50% um, thanks to all the shaper items. However, my chaos damage is currently about half my damage. Um, so it's something like an extra 120% um, extra elemental as chaos, thanks to all the conversions. And it's the most busted way of scaling an Eternity Shroud so far, uh, using all kinds of conversions to get um, one damage into another damage into another damage, and then getting extra chaos on top of all of those layers. So we do end up hitting very hard. Uh, it's something like 600k a hit and uh, something like 3 million DPS. And it is, uh, it makes for a pretty hard POB to function because, um, well, POB doesn't incorporate timeless jewels. So I just have to create a jewel which um, kind of gives me all of the damage that I would otherwise be getting. And you have to remove any of the stuff that's giving you benefits that otherwise doesn't exist. But these aren't any damage nodes anyway, so it doesn't really matter. You then have to um, do your triple conversions. You then have to, like use your other stuff, tick all your other boxes in this uh, build. And you can see here currently 780k average hit. And um, that's just kind of a simulation still from um, previously in the day. But I think it should end up being around 3 million for my single target DPS. And ultimately, it's a pretty fun build. It's a pretty fun exercise in wasting currency. But you can see that you need all shaped gear. 
So all of this stuff uh, had to be like kind of self-crafted and I had to make um, some pretty nice stuff uh, to be able to fill in the gaps of the missing life and resistance stuff. Getting shaped Call of the Brotherhoods, getting a shaped Crown of Eyes is by no means an easy feat because they are hard items to chance. But you grab a um, shaped two stone ring and then start chanting. And uh, the first one took me about 1,500 chances. The second one took me about 5,000 chance orbs. And uh, it's a chance scour process. Crown of Eyes was going to be very hard to do um, because it's a very rare item as well. So I just used a trash to treasure prophecy on that to save some time. Um, and because I wasn't sure if I'd ever be able to get it. So all in all, the gear in this character costs something like, I don't know, 50 exalts maybe. Uh, and it's not easy to try and put together at all. And then um, the actual build itself, the Spectral Shield Throw, what we're running with is Spectral Shield Throw and Fork as my two green supports, Fizz to Lightning, Ellie Focus, Cold to Fire, and Ellie Damage with Attacks. Now, if you play around with uh, Spectral Shield Throw, you should notice that this jewel is rather nice nowadays as a threshold, gives you four additional chains to the main shield. So traditionally, you are throwing out one shield like so, uh, but with Fork, it splits and then um, you have two shields that are chaining and from my tests um, chucking in that chain as well as fork here seems to be the best way for clearing you can use pierce as well but you need some sort of additional clear on top of the original chain here because um, it's good but it doesn't quite clear packs as efficiently as you'd like so something like fork really does help and then paired with the dead eye ascendancy of chain extra damage from um, chains or before chains, it ends up being a very smooth playstyle and clear speed sort of build. And there are a lot of uh, pure cold Deadeye ones you can go out there and follow right now, especially if you look on PoE Ninja and builds. Um, it's very similar to build to the um, to this character that I've built, except you're just converting fully into cold, scaling cold damage, scaling cold penetration, and it should be a lot cheaper and end up with, I don't know, half the DPS which is still pretty damn good in this day and age and does let you experience Spectral Shield Throw to its fullest. You then use some dense fossils on a shield so you can get lots of armor since um, it's based off of um, armor for your base damage, for your physical damage, which then gets converted. So uh, it's not too hard to make a shield with just dense fossil spam and then a bit of quality action. Uh, but the rest is pretty straightforward. Physical is extra lightning, physical is extra cold, elemental um, as extra chaos. You got shaped gear everywhere, crafted some really nice life and a uh, little bit of resist boots through some um, fossils and exalt spam. Uh, overall, it's just going to be a very hard character to put together if you try and follow this, um, especially if you're going to try and get the jewel itself because divining these is entirely possible, but it's very hard to do. Now, I do want to give you guys just a quick demo of a map because uh, it's a pretty smooth mapping build and it's kind of um, just nice to watch. It's like very aesthetically pleasing, uh, charging around, throwing a shield and then watching all of the bounces. And I'm not too sure that the uh, little clips before would have done it full justice because it is, well, uh, it wasn't quite in its full finished state in a lot of those clips. I only just got the chancing at the very end there. And um, yeah, just wanted to show off a bit of the SST gameplay. And I think um, in this next day or two, I will still be trying to get a lot of my um, end game done. I think it's going to be well capable of doing so. Hopefully it holds up in single target for the five-way battle because that'll be the biggest challenge I'd say trying to get um, a lot of the single target while my clear is up for a five-way battle. Not too sure it's gonna work out because uh, well SST as a skill inherently has pretty crap clear, um, single target it's just got good clear and that's always how it's kind of been. Uh, it's pretty good for legions though let me see if I can find one I think they're always at the end pretty much there we go. Uh, but one thing you do have to kind of focus on is fixing the mana because what you really want to be able to do is just spam your um, shield everywhere. And problem is, if you run out of mana, how the fuck do I get to a boss? Oh, there he is. Maybe? Yeah, nailed him. Uh, you need to be able to spam, right? Uh, so that you can shoot your shields wherever you want and chain off of everything everywhere. 
If you've only got enough mana to throw out like three shields, it becomes very reactionary and you have to throw out a shield and make sure you get enough mana back before you can throw out your next shield. Whereas ideally you should be able to throw out lots of shields and then um, get a lot of clear happening that way. So I did have to kind of fix mana just a little bit here or there by getting tireless. Uh, but otherwise, this type of setup using uh, Fizz to Lightning, Cold to Fire, it's very cheap on mana. Uh, it's just something you should definitely be aware of, that if you're going to play Spectral Shield Throw, I think mana might be a bit of an issue if you're scaling a lot of um, heavier supports and ultimately if you don't have much mana. So that's something you definitely need to keep an eye out for. Uh, that's pretty much what I'll say about the build and a bit of a showcase. It's not going to be one that I expect too many people to try and copy, but Spectral Shield Throw... The cold versions, the Deadeye versions, something to look into. There's plenty of builds out there that you can follow and um, check out. And I dare say Spectral Shield Throw is actually pretty damn fun these days and worth looking into. Maybe just not this one. So thank you very much for watching, guys. I'll have a bit of a uh, endgame video up next and uh, hopefully it's good. And see you next time.